I had an experience with the, three weeks ago. I was up in Alberta, Canada. Birds are up there. I don't know how they live there. And uh, I was having lunch, Sabbath lunch, in a home with about 10 people around the table who were following the service, and we were going to be moving into the afternoon seminar, just like today. And my telephone rang, and has a habit of ringing it for long time, as you've proven now. <laughs> and uh, it's a young man that I have ministered to previously. A former pastor. And he's sitting in a truck. And he has a loaded gun. And he's putting it inside his mouth as he speaks to me. And he says to me, this is it. I'm about to pull the trigger. I can't handle these things any longer when I'm going through. Most of what he's going through, if I'm totally honest with you, is involved in both surviving, but he's still trying to pin it on somebody else. And I have desperately been trying to get him to see that there's no healing until we reach the point of acknowledging the truth. Not someone else's fault. You know, my parents may have made mistakes, other people may have done things to me, but basically I am responsible for my own decisions and decision-making, and I've been trying desperately to get him to see this, but he's in the pit, he's totally in the pit. I've never heard him like this before. He said, I'm going to do it in just a few minutes. But I thought I'd call you before I pulled the trigger. I'm glad you did. And I nodded at the people around the table, and they all quit eating, and they started praying immediately, out loud. I could hear the prayers of the stove, clear story. Beautiful group of people. 45 minutes I was on the phone with this young man and God said to me, you can't do this for him, you can't bail him out of this. He has to take a tiny little step of faith in faith. So God actually said to me, this is the time for tough love. You've done so much for this guy and he's still not taking the little step of faith. So I said to him, God has impressed me that I am to pray a prayer and you are to be seated after me. The sinner's prayer of are you willing to pray this prayer up? And all you've got to do is say yes or okay, and I'll go ahead. And it took 45 minutes for him to say yes, okay. And even then, he did it in the faintest little whisper. And I knew he was there. I knew he could pull the trigger very easily. So the group around the table were fervent in prayer. And one woman, especially, who had a gift of prayer, I heard her say with a bold voice, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I'm freeing up this young man from your control so that he will be free to make the decision that will save his life, not only now, but eternally. It was a beautiful prayer. So my cell phone, not this one I've got now, but the one I've just uh, replaced this one with. I mean the other way around. But I replaced it with this one. My cell phone had a problem, and if you put it up to your ear, it would push E. So I'm halfway through the prayer and my ear pushed the, uh, the speaker button. And all of a sudden the table, the people at the table said, hear. And I took it as an act of providence from God because it was not personal. It was a soul struggle. I've never heard anyone in my entire life struggle like this young man. Struggle to come into belief. Struggle to take hold of the promises of God. He was in absolute agony, declaring his unfitness, how he has no faith, how he's useless and worthless to God. So what the, what's the use of taking this, of praying this prayer? So I allowed the speaker to stay on. And the group heard his anguish of soul. You know, 45 minutes later, they just kept praying. No one took a mouth to their food. They just kept praying. Finally, like a whisper, I heard on the phone. What was that? Wow. 
and some of you know that beautiful prayer from Christ God bless us. Take my heart. Keep me pure because I cannot keep it for you. It's beautiful. It's a prayer of hopelessness taking hold of God. He prayed the whole prayer. And I knew the moment he prayed the prayer that the Spirit of God now would lodge in his heart. And the moment he prayed the prayer, that seed of faith was planted. And a little bit of hope started to creep into his mind. And he's back to normal again today. I just spoke to him yesterday. Isn't God gracious? By the way, just in case there's someone sitting here that who's still uncertain about judgment and condemnation. You may even have fear. There's an old picture of God in judgment sitting there with a set of balances, you know, weighing every mistake you've ever made and he's planning to bring it up against you. It's not a Christ-centered picture at all. It costs many people their understanding of salvation. The true picture of God in judgment is substituting himself for what sin has done for the human race. And the examination of our records, as came out last night, is to vindicate God not to prove something about us, because there is nothing to prove about us anyway. But you're sitting here this morning, and you haven't yet seen the beautiful significance of the atoning death of Jesus. You've never fully realized that your judgment, your guilt, your condemnation fell on him and crushed him. It killed him so much that he could call out, Why have you forsaken me? And he did that because he wanted to lift these things from you. You could spend the rest of your life without the fear of judgment or Anyone sitting here like that this morning? If you've never crossed this bridge, you should be out on your knees here this morning. That's you. This is not something to play games with, is it? I saw the agony in this young man, and my mind told me this is a, a moment of what is coming. People will regret the fact that they have not, by faith, yielded to the beauty of what the cross is teaching us. Anyone like that sitting here this morning? 